So after Athena, I think I got a little drunk on power and decided to do another one of my favorite goddesses, the goddess Hecate, who is endlessly more complicated <laughs> due to all the symbolism that she has. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Hecate, um, she is commonly known as the goddess of magic, but she's also the goddess of crossroads and the in-between. So some people say that she's the birth of the threefold goddess, the triple-headed goddess, because she is depicted as three people later on in Greek mythology. Um, earlier on, though, she was depicted as a woman walking along with a long dog that would um, howl her presence, announce her presence with its majestic and haunting howl. So I wanted to incorporate a little bit of Hecate A and Hecate B in here, um, and I did that mostly through the complexity of her headdress. Now, I tried and I tried to get a dog into this picture and it did not want to live there. So I found out her second sacred animal is the polecat. So I went with that. So here I am fussing around in the background. When I start a background, to be honest, it's mostly just like I have an idea of some colors and I just kind of like experiment with different brushes and push things around until they make sense. So here I am, as you can see, sourcing a reference. Um, I like to be very transparent about the fact that I do use reference. Hesitate to be messy. Nothing has to be perfect immediately. I find just really like throwing down base tones everywhere in big broad strokes helps me see how it's coming together. See, now I'm going in with a nice soft smudge brush. Um, I try not to over smudge it. Often I will duplicate a layer, smudge the layer on top of it, and then do some sort of opacity merging of the two together because I don't like losing my painterly strokes in its entirety. So that's what that flicking <laughs> back and forth is. It's me um, just checking what percentage of an opacity and how much I want the underpainting to go through. As you can see, I love, love, love texture in the face. So um, I did a hefty layer of freckling and then I did a little bit of noise and um, I'm quite happy with it. So we got this beautiful golden color going in the eye right now, but uh, the eye shape is not super great. So um, I use liquify quite often to correct facial features um, when I'm having an issue, but if you have like a really hard smudge brush, you can almost use it like a liquify tool as well. It's just a matter of personal preference. Um, there are actually quite a few tools in Procreate and Photoshop and Clip Studio where you can have multiple ways of getting pretty much the same effect. So whatever works for you. Um, I come from a Photoshop background, so I really do enjoy Liquify, um, but use whatever works for you. Yeah, so as you can see, the basics were put down. I flushed it out with some smudging. I brought back some of the paint strokes in there, and then I added all of that facial texture. And now I'm just going in and polishing up all of the different, I was gonna say body parts, but I think I mean facial features. Yeah, I definitely, <laughs> definitely mean facial features. So um, yeah, we're giving her some beautiful soft berry lips. Uh, one of the reasons I was so attracted to the reference that I used is that I really loved the color palette so that's the reason why I'm, I'm keeping that source up as I work on some of the finer details because I, I wanted to kind of keep that strange and ethereal light source. And as I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, like light sources are absolutely not a strength for me. So um, I use references and then I leave them in my videos so that people can be <laughs> fully aware that I use references. Um, I know that there is some back and forth shade in the art community about using them and not using them and whether that makes you a good artist or a garbage artist and uh, 
my firm stance is if you're using stock photography or you have permission and you're transparent about the fact that you're using references, you've got nothing to worry about. I mean, ideally you wanna to get to a point where um, you don't need them or need to rely on them so heavily, but since this is my second Procreate piece of art ever, um, I'm, I'm doing it with a bit of training wheels. Do you like how I just super casually talked over the fact that I was making a nipple because I knew I wouldn't be able to say anything mature while the nipple was on screen? <laughs> Uh, so after I'm done the first pass of like facial features and roughing out the body, um, that's when I tend to put the reference away and never look at it again. Um, I don't like it to become a crutch. So from this point on, it's all just kind of me mucking about <laughs> until it looks right to me. So um, yeah, laying down some hair here doing it a little differently than I usually do my hair. Uh, I do a very sculptural kind of art nouveau wavy twisty turny hair, but I actually wanted this one to look like a little, not flat, but just kind of like long and wispy and maybe even a little wet. Like I wanted it to be open to interpretation as to whether or not like those big shine marks were like grease or sweat and whether her hair was wet or dry like just kind of living in that weird magic trance uh ethereal state um i also read somewhere and i don't remember where i read it so i'll be really embarrassed if it turns out to be a historical fiction novel but i also read somewhere that some of the priestesses in ancient greek specifically the priestesses of vesta used to cover their face and bodies um, in animal fat while they were doing rituals. So you would get these gorgeous highlighter pups everywhere. Um, and I just really liked that idea. So I kind of really ran with it and added some um, non-traditional highlighter colors to make it be a bit more magic-y magic. So yeah, hair is one of those things where you fiddle with it for a really long time and it goes from looking like absolute garbage to looking like hair, but in the last five seconds. So if you're working on hair and it doesn't seem to be coming together, just, just hang in there, kitten. Just keep on doing it because at some point it will look good. See here, actually, I'm slightly changing the tone because I felt the purple was too garish, but I still definitely wanted it to be purple. So I just took the layer and I played with the saturation of purple. Dear God, do I hate hands. And having this all on display for y'all right now is rather horrifying. So I'm just going to pretend that it's not happening right now and hope that it passes quickly. But honestly, the key to hands is um, seeing each individual digit as its own entity and ignore the fact that there is an extra fucking pinky right there it is something so i was working on that hand and i was like something's wrong something's wrong i don't know why this doesn't look right something about it looks too crowded and like so i struggled and struggled and struggled and hopefully this will go off screen soon because i'm literally embarrassed to look at it um and then i was like i don't know i guess that's as good as it's gonna get and i put it down <laughs> And then the next day, I opened up the painting to work on it some more. And I was like, what did I do to her fingers? So don't be afraid <laughs> to step away from your canvas a little bit. And, you know, I'm not saying that you're sitting there going like, oh my God, look at how talented she is. She's such an amazing artist. Yeah, well, this amazing artist or however you perceive me will still occasionally draw additional fingers so um don't be too hard on yourself so i started working on the headdress at this point um uh, one of the things that i do that i find really helps me out is i will do all of the same color on the same layer so when i do the adjustments that 
I did with Hecate's hair. If there was any other purple in the image, that purple would have been modified too. I find that when I'm trying out um, experimental, like it's probably not experimental for most people, but when I'm trying out experimental color palettes for me, um, I really like having the ability to be like, oh, that gold is just, Excuse me. That gold is just too gold. I am going to adjust it because it's too bright rather than repainting everything. Um, what you briefly saw with all the really big white color splotches there was me taking a moment to just visually think through my light sources. Because like I say, I, I struggle. I struggle. So at this point... I'm kind of just going in and finishing all the different colors so that I can get an idea as to how it's all going to work together. Because um, <laughs> when the sensor nipple that keeps coming and going means that, like if there's the sensor nipple on there, it means I'm currently working on that section on Twitch <laughs> because they don't let you show nipples, even if they're animated or pixels. So, um, down with the nipple oppression but I hope you enjoy my cheeky censorship <laughs> but um yeah so as I was saying this is the part where I I have the figure done to a point where I really like it so I just put up the rest of the color now this polecat and I we had an experience and we went through it see that was just one massive liquify where I completely changed the shape of the face because I didn't like it there's going to be another one so if it doesn't look right immediately don't beat yourself up I had a really sad looking polecat for some reason and I took out a bunch of references which is why there's that reference right there and uh, just kept messing with it until it seemed correct I'm waiting for that second liquify. I think it's around now-ish. Oh, maybe I missed it. I'm not sure. But I, I did have a hard time with that color scheme and animal. So <laughs> there's a lot of phases that it goes through including bone structure. Uh, that's when I start playing around with um, some of the hair brushes, I think. I was having a really difficult time with the texture, so I went on Etsy and I bought some fur texture brushes that were pretty helpful. Um, I only ended up using one. Sometimes I spend like $20 on a brush pack and then I only use one brush from the pack because um, I'm really stubborn about what I like and what I don't like. But yeah, here it is kind of coming together more and more. Thanks to a little bit of texture. Yeah, and then I pop the reference back up again. I, I like hiding it every once in a while just to see what I would do on my own, if it makes sense, trust my own instincts. So it's kind of like, um, like having floaties, I guess, would be the best analogy. Like it, it's there in case I need it, but I try not to use it too, too, too much. Because pushing yourself is, is the way that you grow. At least it's the way that I grow. And I am very content to like sit on my butt and just be like mediocre. So uh, sometimes I really need to push myself. <laughs> See, now he's starting to look like a little pole cat. It's interesting re-watching. Oh no, see there, there's the brushes. I was trying them all out to see what kind of textures they would do. So you're gonna notice a lot more fur texture is about to come into this. Memories. Memories of the polecat struggle. A 
Okay, so that's another thing that I do is um, sometimes I'll just go through all the different layer variations. Like, what does screen look like? What does dodge look like? Because I have found some actual, like, really gorgeous happy accidents doing that so every once in a while especially when I'm, I'm struggling with a color palette I, I I will go through all of them and just be like is this good would this help me and as you can see kind of going through it and and playing with these texture brushes um, ended up bringing this character um, a lot closer to life I almost wish you could see it with more detail in the video because in the actual prints, like, you can see individual strands of hair and I'm quite proud of it. It might be a bit too much detail, <laughs> but that's kind of my life story. It's like, oh, we can add more detail. I guess I shall. <laughs> And again, the flickering is when I'm turning layers on and off. So for something like this, um, I have all the base coloring on a layer, but I do all of the hair detailing on a separate layer so that um, I can pull it back if it's getting too linear or I can add more to it or just smudge out and erase certain sections. Um, if you can keep track of your layers, do as many layers as you want. Live your best layer life. Um, because there, there it is. He was sad and then he was suspicious and now he's just majestic. And that was all just liquefying the snoot. So don't be afraid, even if you've already put a lot of work, like we're seeing this really fast and I think we spent at least 10 minutes on that section. So I would hazard a guess that it took me like at least five hours of messing with it and then I liquefied it again. So hopefully that's a bit of a lesson that it's okay to admit when things are just not working. And it's okay to go in and mess with them, even if you've already sunk a lot of hours into it. Because you're gonna regret it if you don't, I find. Like, if I had not fixed that snout, the snoot, the snoot boops issue, um, I probably would have been really pissed looking at my prints when I got them done a week or so later. So um, take the time take the time there's nothing wrong with even duplicating the whole base image and just making adjustments on a separate image I am so sorry <laughs> I was like I'm gonna record my voiceover at 10 in the morning when I'm all peppy and apparently it's still yawn city over here um so I apologize <laughs> for being a human being that can never get enough adequate sleep <laughs> Yeah, and there, I gave him a little shoulder flex, like, boop. Sometimes you just gotta go in and you gotta change some very basic parts. Like, just like those little tweaks can make all the difference. And here, to blend them in a little more, I was just adding a little bit more um, hair contouring. Because if you had a pole cat on your shoulder, you're goddamn right, it would... <laughs> get its hair tangled up in him. What am I looking at? Are we working on the necklace? Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> what is that thing there that I done did? Um, yeah, I think I'm just working on parts of the hair and the necklace there. Oh, oh! Booby bounce. That was when I decided the nibble was in the wrong place and I once again liquefy. <laughs> Liquify saves me so often. I'm like, why is that? Why anatomy? Why is that too high? And then I fix it. 
This is my monarch butterfly. Technically, butterflies are the symbol of psyche, as in eros and psyche, as in um, the physical personification and embodiment of our own psychology. But the butterfly is also a powerful symbol of transformation. So I did want to include it. And also like while the skull is super baller and a little badass, I wanted to add a little bit more softness back into Hecate where I could. Doing a little bit of earrings. I actually like doing feathers. Um, one of my tricks is I don't add any hard outline to it. Like there's a lot of hard outlines in this painting to um, give it that Art Nouveau look, but I just straight up will not do that on feathers or fur so that they can maintain a very light airy quality. even sure what I'm looking at right now oh the circlet <laughs> oh man it's funny how like I can't blow up these photos like the the doc the document I can't blow up the video files too much because then it just becomes like pixelated gobbledygook but I want to try and show you people as much as possible um the process which is why i actually settled on this new format of having like the full screen one and then the zoom in um if you all like that it would be super nice for you to say so in the comments so i know that i'm on the right track because i am trying to constantly um experiment and give all of you some of the premium premium cost some of the best content i can provide so this part, this part I, I do not recommend. Um, doing bronze faces with inverted light sources is not a good time and just don't do it. I still get mad when I look at them. <laughs> and uh, in my prints, they actually came out super dark, like darker than I was intending. And I was like, all those hours, all of those hours, and you can't even see it. Um, so one of the tricks to shine to metal, since we're looking at metal, is um, if you want it to be very shiny, you need more stripes alternating between light and dark. If you want it to have like a dull sheen, then you only need one or two transitions um, with some very minimal smoothing. But to make it look high, high, high shine, you almost need these stripes of um, various tones of the metal that you're working in with some smoothing and some left very crisp and clear to be that like strong ass chrome highlight. If, um, if a tutorial on hair or metal are of interest to any of you, again, please let me know in the comments. I need a little direction <laughs> sometimes because I have so much self-doubt about my own content. I never quite know what to create. So if there are things that you like, it is always nice to tell me as much. But if you look at the two heads, so there's one head with spikes and there's one head with a laurel leaf. Um, in the depictions of Hecate where she is three women, the head with the crown of spikes holds a knife. The one with the laurel leaves holds a rope. And then the one in front with the crescent moon holds two torches. So as you can see, um, I just sort of did my own take on it. Instead of two torches, I do have the one candle, but I wanted to do that kind of like mystic, all seeing eye with the eye covered, like she's looking through the universes. And um, I added rope in her headdress 
There's no knife, though. Um, I thought about having the polecat hold the knife, but then I was like, no, now you're just being ridiculous. Like, it shouldn't be going around being like, I will cut you. It's a cute little polecat. Sometimes in art, I have really wacky instincts and sometimes I follow them, but this time I was like, mm, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not have an armed and angry polecat on Hecate's shoulder. I didn't want it to become like comical. Uh, as someone who is spiritually inclined and has been brought up in a shamanistic household, but also um practiced wicca for a very long time and i'm still kind of low-key practicing um i don't think it's good juju <laughs> to draw a god or goddess and then like do a mockery within it <laughs> you know what i mean it's like being like hello deity i have you know invoked you and tried to play homage and then i did this silly cartoon on your shoulder so there I am with another um, reference I found on stock photography. I find skulls are pretty difficult. So I use references for them. As you can tell, that wasn't the reference I used to draw from. Um, that's something that I really like doing. So it avoids my work becoming recognizably referenced. I will draw by eye, but then use a reference for color and texture or I'll do the opposite where I will use a reference to get the anatomy of something down, but then not use it for color or anything of that matter. Yeah, I think I'm just doing some really like tight. Yeah, there we go. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like looking to pop in the highlights after putting some more texture in there. And now I'm going in and cleaning up all of the rope that's attached to the headdress. Are we back to the hands? Oh no, we're doing the eyes and the swirl. So in my um, limited edition collector's one, that gray eye and that gray swirl are actually going to be hand silver leafed by yours truly. Um, I thought it would add like a really fun mystical flair. Also, one of my favorite Oracle decks um, is all done on silver and gold leaf cards. And even though it's only like this tiny little shock of sparkle, there's just something really compelling about it, I find. Okay, so here I'm starting to kind of feel out my light source and make sure it makes sense, which I'm not always sure. And then doing a little bit of polishing around the hair. I think I'm about to dive into the peonies and the rope a little more. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That headdress, I think it does honor to her and looks really impressive when I'm done. But, <laughs> oh lord, if I knew, if I knew the amount of headaches it would give me, I do not think I would have done it. So um, the U is the plant, well, the plant is called U that is around the bottom and it is actually Hecate's um, sacred herb. Um, she has a couple of different herbs that are sacred to her, but I went with U because it's not belladonna or nightshade or some of the more dangerous poisonous ones that are attached to her. Um, it can also be used for healing and I wanted to emphasize both the good and bad of magic and healing and all of those important things. Um, 
I think that our, in our society, we have a really bad habit of categorizing things as good and bad. And um, Hecate is a beautifully complex goddess. And one of the reasons why I love her so much and I didn't want it to be super dark. Like I didn't want it to be like edgelord goddess of witchcraft. <laughs> I, I wanted to show um, the beauty of nature, the beauty of transformation and how um, when you're at crossroads with something, so many things can change, uh, but almost all of that power comes from within. So as a cute little touch, I thought it'd be nice to um, add a little bit of stardust around the eye. So if you look really closely, there's some stardust glitter. Um, I had a lot of fun working on the lighting for that. <laughs> so that, that looks, that was me trying to find the center of where the eye should be because I felt like something was off. So I just kept flipping the image back and forth and back and forth, which is a really good trick to do if you um, feel like something looks incorrect, but you're not sure. Um, it's a great way to do it. I also had a lot of fun creating that glow for the candle and that little glow on her cheek and the pole cat's cheek. Um, I was actually quite nervous about doing that flame, but in the end, um, I think it brought a really special warmth to the piece that was needed. So I'm pleased with that. This is the part where I am fussing over such minutiae that I can't even tell what I'm currently working on looking at the video. It just goes to show one of the things I absolutely need to learn about working in Procreate and other digital things is like, I will fixate on the tiniest of tiny details and it's not even visible in the final. So, that is something that I'm aiming to work on with Artemis, which is the piece that I am currently doing right now on stream. So if you'd like to watch, tune in on Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I decided to add um, some more of a buttercream yellow warmth to the berries to contrast how venomous and deep her lips look. Um, I just thought it would be fun to have like not the same berry tone everywhere. Um, even though you can be quite a deep red. Um, I wanted to distinguish it somehow. So that's pretty much the end. I remember I finished painting <laughs> the U last because I always put up the herbs. Um, wait until the very end to do them. So this is my beautiful Hecate and I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of me talking about what I did. So thank you very much everyone and I hope you have a lovely day and check me out next time. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.